Hi, and welcome to part two of my Fortis Coliseum guide. Oh, this guy watched my video last night. Uh, I don't want to hear what he has to say because it's probably not going to be very good. I'm going to get out of here, a little line of sight technology for you. In this part of the video, I'm going to be showing some fairly common wave facts and solutions. Hopefully those are very helpful. Good luck. With a mage in front of a 3x3 NPC, you'll want to start all the way west or south, and then move all the way east or north. Pray against the back NPC and then against the mage. This is very common in the first few waves, and also once the mage reinforcement spawns. And they will optic. With a mage behind a 3x3 NPC, you can outrange the mage's 10 tile attack distance. Stand on the back 3 tiles, and you will be able to attack the front NPC, and the mage will not be able to hit you. If you stand on the tiles I've marked Maya 1 Shaman, you can attack the front NPC with Myopia 1 on, with the Tebow or Shadow. If Myopia more than one is on, or you don't want to use a Tebow or Shadow for whatever reason, you can auto-cast Barrage. Just step out back, pray range, and the Shaman will not be able to hit you at all. If you want to move forward, once the front NPC is attacking you, you can just pray Mage and run forward and the Shaman will attack you on a different tick. When you have two rangers, or two majors, if you're in a much later wave, in front, of a min uh, in front of a manticore, you should simply start by moving out and seeing if the manticore is same ticked by starting on the same style. In this example, the manticore is going to start with range, will naturally same tick because all three NPCs saw it on the same tick. If it doesn't, You'll have to stand six tiles back from the west side and let the first two NPCs see you and then show them to, yourself, to the manticore. That's not when you have two 3x3s in front of a manticore that hasn't revealed its style yet, the simplest option is to stand right next to the exit of the pillar and then let all three see you at once. If the manticore is on the same style, they will all naturally same tick. You can just flip the manticore. If they aren't on the same tick, you'll have to stand six tiles back from the pillar and step out so that the two front NPCs can hit you. Then you'll move forward and the manticore will be able to see you on an off tick. In this example, the manticore preys range, so it's a very easy solve. With a manticore in the front and two off-style NPCs in the back, in this case the manticore is going to start with mage and there are two rangers in the back, we'll just have to stand next to the pillar and rock two steps south. The two back NPCs will see us first, and then we'll pray against the manticore style. This also works with two manticores in the back and an off-style front NPC, or if one of these was a short, the manticore was a shockwave, or really any situation like this. A range, mage, range, melee. With a manticore in the front and two off style NPCs in the back, in this case the manticore is going to start with mage and there are two rangers in the back, we'll just have to stand next to the pillar and rock two steps south. The two back NPCs will see us first and then we'll pray against the manticore style. This also works with two manticores in the back and an off style front NPC. Or if one of these was a short, the manticore was a shockwave, or really any situation like this. A range, mage, range, melee. With an off style manticore or off style NPC sandwiched between two other NPCs, here we have a range, mage starting manticore, and range stack. Though this manticore could also be a shockwave colossus, or really any other combination that looks like this. We'll have to do the wiggle tech, which is pretty common in wave 65 of the Inferno as well. We start by standing three tiles west of the pillar. We're gonna click on one, the one tile I have marked, praying against the back NPC. 
then click on the two tile here, directly next to the pillar, then click on the three tile praying mage against the middle NPC, and we'll flick the manticore. The front ranger will see us one tick after the manticore sees us. The praying range against the manticore's second hit will also pray against the front NPC. This is a pretty difficult prayer flick to maintain because you'll have to do a four tick cycle. But once you're in the hang of it, it's essentially just a one way manticore plus other NPC flick. It just looks scarier than it is. As you can see, the back Shockwave Cl Javelin Colossus is entirely off-ticked, and the front Javelin Colossus is same-ticked with a Manticore's ranged attack. If you don't want to bother setting up an off-tick on the northwest pillar, a much simpler solution to any three stack east of the pillar with only one style and an unrevealed Manticore is just to run southeast. The two back NPCs will both get stuck north of the southeast pillar, and the front NPC will come along the west side of the southeast pillar and be able to see you, but it will be isolated. It won't take any damage because the front Minotaur is not, Manticore is not able to attack us. If you have a Manticore stuck on the second row of 3x3 three three NPCs east of the pillar, the simple thing to do is just stand north of the pillar and kill the manticore. The northwestern NPC in the block stack, here it's a shockwave colossus, will be able to see us, but nothing else will. This can happen whether or not there's a fourth NPC in the southeast corner of the stack. We just walk north, and only the shockwave will be able to attack us. If you have an unrevealed manticore and only one NPC, it's always very easy to off-tick them, but if you don't want to deal with that, you can still just run southeast, just like if there were three NPCs. This will separate the two NPCs, and you'll be able to deal with them at your leisure and not take any damage on the run. By standing on the east side here, both of the NPCs will be stuck north of the southeast pillar. When you have an already revealed manticore that's starting with the same tile as the NPC in front of it, stand on the north edge of the pillar, pray against the manticore's first tile, and walk out and click the manticore. The front NPC will same tick with the manticore's first tile. It's a very easy solve. It's essentially just clicking a manticore. Remember, you have to pray against the second attack of the front NPC. Uh, you have three ticks, I believe, after the Manticore's last attack. When you have a revealed Manticore behind another NPC, and the Manticore attacks with the opposite style, you need to stand directly next to the pillar, and then walk out two squares, either south or west, depending on the direction. The Manticore will attack first, so pray against its prayer, and then the second tick of the Manticore's attack will same tick with the matching attack from the front NPC. Again, it's just like clicking a Manticore. You can essentially ignore the front NPC entirely. Remember, you have to pray against the front NPC's second attack. When you're facing two Manticores, if they are attacking on the same tick cycle, they will always same tick with each other and offset by five ticks. So your prayer pattern will always be either mage range melee blank blank, mage range melee blank blank, or range mage melee blank blank, range mage melee blank blank. The critical thing here is to make sure that both manticores see you on the same tick so that they both charge up on the same tick and naturally offset. If one of them sees you earlier than the other, they will not same tick. They will off tick with each other and you won't be able to flick both at the same time. If you mess it up, 
The simple fix is to get out of their line of sight behind a pillar and let both of them come off of their attack cooldown. Then, when you step out again, they will same tick with each other if they both see you at the same time. Here, the front Manticore has seen us, and I believe the back one hasn't seen us at all. Because we're stepping out from the eastern edge of the pillar, both Manticores will see us at the same time, and they will naturally get in the same cycle, and it's very easy to click. See, the front one will attack us first while the back is charging up, and then they are same ticked. And you'll essentially have to flick them at double the normal attack speed, because they will naturally offset, but it's still a very easy flick. With two Manticores in front of an NPC, and the Manticores aren't revealed, you will always be able to handle this by just off-ticking it, but a much simpler solution is just to run either southeast or southwest. Either will work, and they will separate the NPC. Remember, the Manticore is not revealed, so you only have to pray against the other NPC. And it will come down by itself. This is a Wave 10 example of a Manticore with two ranged NPCs behind it, and with Wave 10, another Manticore stuck in the northeast. This can be solved just by staying in the northwest with the optics I've shown previously, but you can also run southeast to split the stacks and only have to deal with one at a time. This is a bit of a more elaborate run, though, because after we get to the south side, we'll have to let the NPCs wrap around and then go to the east side to isolate the easternmost NPC. Again, we'll take no damage because the manticores are not revealed. Here you can see that the western range Colossus is going to see us, and we don't want to deal with it. Now that these NPCs are only two tiles away from the pillar, we can now walk to the east side and only have to deal with the eastern manticore. This next clip isn't actually a good solve, but it is an example of reacting to an extremely fucked Wave 11 solve with Dynamic Duo on. As you can see, both Shadow Shockwave Colossuses and the Manticore can see us west of the pillar. And I believe this Manticore is going to start range, so it won't even naturally offset. We react quickly here while the Manticore is still charging up, to run east. Both of these Shockwave Colossuses are going to be on their attack cooldown, so if we pray range when we step out, they should off tick. As you saw, the only damage we took is an off prey hit from this Manticore and the Fremenix. Very hard to deal with both. But this is an example of why you need to react quickly and get into a good solve. This is by far the simplest way to solve this wave, and it only works because we reacted immediately. The Shockwave Colossuses actually have quite low HP, so while the back one is going to wrap around, it's pretty realistic to kill a Shockwave Colossus before the Minotaur spawns. They only have 125 HP, so you should be able to kill them before reinforcement spawns as long as you go pretty quickly and don't waste much time. So we have a decent amount of leeway, or at least a little. Would have been able to get one or two hits off, and even then the Minotaur might off-tick. It is possible to force off-ticks on the melees in essentially any situation by walking under them, but there's realistically an 80% chance that the Minotaur will off-tick with whatever you're hitting, and for a first clear, 80% is pretty good. You can see that we're staying against this specific tile on the southeast edge of the pillar in order to avoid giving the Shaman line of sight and not having to off-tick. 
we're just taking the solar flare and that's not a big deal. Later on in the same wave, we have a shockwave colossus behind two manticores that are going to start with range. This is a fairly common inferno solve as I mentioned previously, and the simple solution is to stand one tile away from the pillar in the middle and take two steps back. Pray against the front NPC, in this case a manticore, and the back NPC. If it's a ranger, you'll set up a one tick offset. But here it's a manticore, so the manticore's mage attack will just same tick with the shockwave colossus, giving you a zero damage solution. Remember, you have to pray against the second attack from the shockwave. If you don't feel confident staying on the northwest pillar, and you have this situation with an unrevealed manticore, a mage, and a range behind the northeast pillar, or the opposite, you can still make a southeast run, much like if you had two of the same NPC. The far back NPC cannot see you immediately, so only the front one will be able to hit you on the first tick of your diagonal run. They will naturally off tick. Pray against the closer NPC and then the further one. This is another example of a front ranged manticore and a back mage. We stand one tile away from the pillar and then move two tiles out west and pray against the manticore and the mage will naturally off tick. Remember, we have to pray against the mage's second attack. This clip shows how to deal with a range or mage and a manticore at the start of a wave. We're going to stay west so we can reveal what the manticore style starts with and that will tell us how to off tick it. Here, as you can see from the particles, the manticore is starting with range. This means that we want the back colossus and the manticore to be same tick. So we are going to go out to the westernmost edge and then step out so that both of them see us on the same tick. This will now also safe spot the minotaur because we are on the western side of the pillar. Note that if we had been on the other tick and the manticore had started with mage, we would have had to stand in the middle of the pillar and step out west, so that it would have gone range, mage, range, melee. It's important to do this solve early because 66 ticks into the wave, the minotaur will spawn, and you want to have the safe spot already set up. On wave 10, when you have two front NPCs and two back NPCs, and the two front NPCs are unrevealed manticores, they won't naturally off-tick, or they may not naturally off-tick. And if the farthest back NPC is also right here, it may be very difficult to solve. So, before we reveal the manticores, we're going to run southwest. The two NPCs lined up directly next to the northwest pillar will end up north of the southwest pillar. We can then let the other eastern NPCs walk down and either kill them on the south side of the pillar or run to the west side of the pillar and kill the two NPCs from the front row. As you can see here. Note that we could also corner trap an NPC that's walking down by standing on this specific tile. That means that an NPC over here won't be able to get to us if there's another one further out. However, that does not work with the rangers very well because you will take re-entry damage. 